Hi, I'm George, and we recently received a letter from Max uh, from Germany asking whether uh, he's able to fill his rockets to higher pressures. Now, all he's got is just a bicycle pump, so he's limited to only about eight bar. And he asked whether the uh, high pressure pumps used for air guns are any good for water rockets. Now, we didn't have any direct experience with these, and so we thought we'd buy one from eBay. So this is your regular pump, and then this is what the PCP pump looks like. They look very similar, but they're actually quite different. This one will go to about 3000 PSI. Now this one costs uh, only $46, uh, that's Aussie dollars, on eBay, including delivery. Now they range normally from about uh, 50 to $200. Uh, dollars. Now we wanted to go for the cheaper one uh, because at the higher end of the price range, you're getting closer to what scuba tanks cost. So uh, let's have a look how these two compare. For this experiment, we're going to pressurize this reinforced pressure chamber that's just over two liters in volume. One end has a Schrader valve fitted and the other end has a scuba hose connector so we can fit a pressure gauge to it. We'll start off with the regular bicycle pump. And that just connects to the valve like this. Here's the pressure gauge fitted on the end of the hose so that we can easily see it with the camera. Of course, it's always important to wear eye and ear protection when doing these experiments. Okay, so let's start pumping. The bike pump is a single stage pump, so at first it's fairly easy to pump, but as you start getting over 100 PSI, it starts getting significantly more difficult. As we approach 120 PSI, it really gets difficult and you have to put your whole weight behind it. This pump took about 70 strokes to reach 120 psi. Now this translates to about 16 and a half litres of air or 240 millilitres per stroke. It took just over two minutes to pump this amount. This pump has a bleed valve built into the handle so it's easy to let the air out again. Okay, now it's time to try the PCP pump. We used one of the adapters that came with the pump, though we had to put in a nylon washer to make it seal against the Schrader valve properly. When you're using these pumps, you want to go all the way to the ends of the stroke for maximum performance. To get to 120 psi, it took about 85 strokes, though the effort was pretty much the same as it was at the beginning. It took a total of about 170 strokes to get to 210 psi, that was still fairly easy, but you could notice a little bit of effort was needed. 15. Uh, but it was nowhere near the effort that you had to use for the 120 psi with the regular pump. It took about five and a half minutes to pump in the 30 litres of air, and that translated to about 180 millilitres of air per stroke. We stopped the test at this point and let the air out. The pump has a bleed valve here at the bottom. So how does this translate to practical use in water rockets? To fill a rocket of this size to 210 psi, which has about 4 litres of air volume, it would take about 350 strokes or 12 minutes of pumping. Now filling a rocket like this to 650 psi that has 5.2 litres of air volume, it would take about 1400 strokes or about 45 minutes to pump. And finally, to fill a rocket like this to 210 psi, which has a total of 37 litres of air, uh, it would take about 3,200 strokes, or 1 hour and 40 minutes of pumping. If you had to factor in cooldown periods, you're looking at perhaps 3 hours of pumping. So, overall, the pump is very easy to use. Uh, it's quite portable. Uh, you certainly don't need any power supplies for your compressor, or you have to lug around heavy scuba tanks. Um, it's certainly usable for the small to mid-sized uh, high-pressure rockets. Uh, now, because you are dealing with high-pressure air, uh, it's very dangerous. So in the minimum, you want to have eyes and ear protection. One of the cons of this uh, pump is that it's got a fairly small dial, so you're going to 
uh, and so it's got a fairly low resolution for the types of pressures we're interested in. Mid-range for this uh, gauge it's about 20 megapascals or 3000 psi so it just doesn't have the resolution for what we need for, for water rockets. So that's just not enough to tell you whether you're at 150 psi or 300 psi. Um, the other problem is it gets quite hot uh, and the recommended sort of cool down time is about 10 to 15 minutes after five minutes of pumping. Uh, so if you're pumping up bigger rockets, uh, you certainly need to uh, let it cool down um, while you're pumping those. Uh, and lastly, it's also quite a complex pump. There's quite a few seals and O-rings within the pump. And so you need to um, sometimes service it and also keep it lubricated with silicon oil. Thankfully, when we bought the pump, it also came with a whole bag of spare parts uh, and O-rings and everything and springs and everything you'd need. So that makes it very easy. That came free with it. If you've used a pump like this previously for your water rockets, we'd love to know uh, what your experiences with it were. Uh, please leave them in the comments below for others to see. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. For comparison, a 10 litre scuba tank would take about 15,000 strokes to fill with one of these to 3,000 psi.